If you're understanding me, say amen. amen. Now write this down, please. Praying the will of God is beyond attaching scriptures to prayer. Just listen carefully. You came to church. Praying the will of God is beyond attaching scripture because you will be learning that the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak anything you want to hear. So just because a scripture was connected to what you are saying does not mean when Satan wanted to bring Jesus down, he started by just talking casually. But when Jesus responded, it is written. From then on, every other thing he said, he connected it to scripture. Yet it was not the will of God. Is that in your Bible? So just because you found a scripture for what you want, does not mean it's the will of God. Say amen. amen. I promise that we're going to be praying, so we'll soon pray. Maybe in the next five minutes we'll pray and then we'll continue. Are we learning now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you pray consistent with the will of God, the Bible leaves us with an assurance that your prayer becomes effectual. 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 This is very powerful. I will talk a bit about this. But let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. May I request that we read in concert when we have it projected. Ready? One to read. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. One more time please. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15, if you do not mind. And if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, when we read 15 to 17, Paul makes a profound statement that I did not understand for many years. He said, see that ye walk circumspectly. The word circumspect is accurately. Are we together? Accurately, not as fools, but as wise. Where is the wisdom in that statement? He says you are wise when you redeem time because the days are evil. Are we together now? That means according to Paul's understanding, the most expensive commodity on earth is time. He says in all your living, do not waste time. And that you must master the art of redeeming time. And the wisdom to redeem time according to this scripture in verse 17, he says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. That means the moment you know the will of God, you redeem time. Because the time that you move in error and confusion, and then you return back is minimized. Discerning the will of God is one of the ways we gain time. Because you walk accurately, knowing that you are at the heart, the epicenter of the will of God. And the apostle calls that wisdom. Are we together? This is very important. The entire kingdom system was built around the will of God. It is important that we understand these believers. The entire system of the kingdom was built around the will of God. When Jesus was teaching what we call the Lord's Prayer, he says when you pray, you pray that your kingdom come. And then he says, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven so you would notice that the entire economy of heaven revolves around the will of god in fact this is the assignment of the power of god to maintain the will of god in the life of the believer and across the cosmos when the will of god is not in place the power of god has no assignment the assignment of the power of god is to enforce and to maintain the will of god the reason why the sick are healed is not because the power of God can heal. It's because sickness is inconsistent with the will of God. So the power of God finds an assignment there. What gives the power of God assignment, are we together now, is its ability to bring all things to line up with the will of God. If you understand the concept of the will of God, then you will have power in your prayer. 
Are we together? Because you see, the first assignment of the believer in approaching prayer is to understand the will of God concerning what you are about to pray for or to understand how to find out the will of God. Making decrees is useless until you ascertain you are in the will of God. Are we together now? Every time you are in ignorance as to the will of God, your first assignment is to get to a point of understanding. And I'm going to be showing you. So you see that most believers do all kinds of things around the place of prayer. And just because sincere energy was dissipated, we hope that God will sympathize with our passion and somehow answer it. You see, God has bound himself to honor his word. The Bible says he exalts his word even above his office. If you're learning, say amen. amen. So the Bible talks about the will of God as the secret that makes prayer powerful. But in truth and in experience, we learn that there are many aspects of the will of God that are clear and known from scripture. But from a pragmatic standpoint, there are times where unique to your destiny, you will be at a loss as to the unique expression of God's will. A provision was made in our dealings with God where men can tap into that intelligence. Are we together now? That the will of God was, that was prior to that time not known, it can be known. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Hallelujah. So very quickly, two ways to pray the will of God. Are we learning? Number one. Perhaps let me back down a bit and just establish a few things and then we'll understand. There are three layers to scripture and I want you to please listen. This Bible you see essentially has at least three layers. There could be more. But there are three layers to the Bible. Number one, there is a historic slash archaeological layer to scripture. That means this book you see is also a piece of archaeological and historic material. Are we right on that? There are people who are not Christians and have had to make reference to the Bible in writing their thesis and in building up their points for whatever faith practice. So this is an archaeological material. When you read the Bible, you see history captured. When you read the Bible, you see archaeology captured. That is a layer. The second layer to scripture is called a doctrinal layer. Now, this one, you have to be a believer to have the eyes that sees and understand. The doctrinal layer to scripture. Are we together? This is where the intelligence and the wisdom of God is derived from scripture. When a historian who is not born again reads the Bible, he cannot see the doctrinal sense that is connected in it. The Bible just looks like a gap of events that were put together, canonized together. But there is the doctrinal layer of scripture. This is where um, the system of intelligence of the believer is built around. Is built around doctrine. Are we together now? The third layer is called the prophetic layer of scripture. This one, um, it is enhanced when you have a sound understanding of doctrine. But it is the Holy Spirit that opens you up to that layer. And you can have revelations that are not general to everybody. It is given to you as a unique weapon of victory. That comes to you as rhema that you will engage and produce results. Another person may use it and it may not work for the person. You can be praying in scripture, for instance, trusting God, where do I establish myself? And a scripture will come to you. You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn northwards. That's not a word for everybody. It, to you, it has ministered the answer to what you are looking for. And you will follow with literally, and it will open a door for you. But another person may apply that scripture and it will not work for the person. There is a prophetic layer to scripture. Do you understand this now? Yes, this is very powerful. It is the reason why the study of scripture outside of the ministry of the Holy Spirit will lead to a lot of imbalances because you will find many, many scriptures and not be able to connect them intelligently to produce the will of God. 
He said, ye search the scripture, for in them you think that, you see, you see what Jesus was saying? Those guys were studious, but they did not respect the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus, who was the word incarnate, when he came, they could not even connect him with the things they were studying. They had the knowledge of scripture, but the word incarnate, the logos of God was standing before them. And yet, how do you have such a rich bank of scripture and then the logos is standing and you cannot connect two of them? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Number one, the two ways that we pray the will of God in the place of prayer is number one, by praying scripture-based prayer. You just write scripture-based prayer scripture based prayer i made a statement earlier on and it's time to bring it balanced that just because you found a scripture does not mean you are in the will of god that is true but generally speaking when your prayer is word compliant you must find a scripture according to the written word are we together now a scripture that supports this is how the technology of heaven works just saying god do it you said it where he said present your cause he said bring forth your strong reasons are we together now when bland Bartimeo, you notice bland Bartimeo never said jesus have mercy on me he said thou son of david jesus understood what he was saying you have a covenant with david there was a covenant that god had with david and I'm standing to invoke that covenant. The woman in Luke chapter 12 who had suffered the issue of blood, he said, is this ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? There is a basis. Not just that she has suffered 18 years. She's a daughter of Abraham. And I left Abraham a promise that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And part of the component of that blessing is wholesomeness. Wholeness. So this woman's state is a demonstration that God is not faithful. And when Jesus saw it, being the express image of God, he had to change it to represent the will of God correctly there. That was the basis for her healing. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Scripture-based prayer. It is the reason why believers must be equipped with sufficient understanding of Scripture. So that in the place of prayer, you pray with authority, knowing that the written word of God has a very rich capture, a rich expression of his will. So for instance, you are praying and trusting God for healing. Just saying, God, heal me. I know, are you not powerful? Don't be watching me like that. That is sympathetic prayer, but it is not fervent. It is not effectual because there is no scriptural basis for your demand. You see how we pray. An average believer prays this way. And not to be sarcastic, but just quite honestly. Father, thank you. The whole preambles, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the rose of Sharon, king of kings, lord of lords. And once we pass that, then we go straight to the fact that God, I'm here again. Is it that you are not, you cannot hear me? You are hearing this one. You are doing this one in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you now, you, you know, and so on and so forth. And then just because we say amen at the end of what we're saying honestly it may be sincere prayer but as matured believers we must learn that not every kind of prayer god is almighty but he has bound himself to the operation of his word it is the reason why as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man there was a protocol he had to submit to until man was redeemed because it is written that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And God who created man and created the law submitted himself. Not even him could cast away sin from man. When you understand this about God, that God did not spare his own son. He also allowed him to submit to what the word said prophetically. That must be the condition for redemption. If he did not spare Jesus, God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He's called compassion, but he's moved with his word, by his word. To be touched does not mean he will just act. He is touched. And when God wants to help you by being touched, he sends you his word. Is someone learning now? Scripture-based prayer. 
scripture based prayer scripture based prayer scripture based prayer that every time you are praying making your petitions you take the time as a responsible believer to find scriptures that supports that which you know God wants to do in your life blindly assuming that God you said you will prosper me God I know you you are too good to allow me this way those things are very sincere but you will not get resolved that way are we together number two the second way we pray the will of God is by praying in the spirit engaging the wisdom of the spirit in praying so as to birth the will of God this is very powerful the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 when you read 26 and 27 Romans 8 26 and 27 likewise he says the spirit helpeth in our infirmity what is infirmity there contextually the word infirmity there does not mean sickness it means limitations by reason of wearing a mortal body we are limited in our understanding we see in part and we prophesy in part because of that limitation now there are three dimensions of God's nature he did not share with man I don't have the time to explain this here but it's important for us to know when the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature it is not every part of his nature he gave man I hope you know that there are certain dimensions of God's nature that are exclusive to him three of them number one his omnipresence he did not share that with man number two his omnipotence the ability to be all-powerful and then number three his ability to be omniscient no all-knowing these three dimensions of God he did not share with man they brand him in a class all by himself are we together now so man is not all powerful our power is derived that's why we have authority authority is the legitimacy to use power God does not have authority because authority demands that you must be regulated every time you give a man authority there must be a system above that man that supervises the management of that power and authority are we together now yes i know the bible says all authority has been given notice jesus is speaking as a man all authority authority is given it is not derived it is given given by one higher than you god was willing to submit if he found someone greater than him but he did not find any and so that's what makes him all powerful you get it now yes demons have power but they do not have authority authority is the legitimacy to use power an armed robber has a gun a military man has a gun they both have power but one has authority that's why he will not be jailed for shooting the other guy does not have authority are you getting the point now believers were not just given power if the only thing god gave us is power we're in trouble it means we operate just like demon spirits what gives us an edge is that we have authority is the reason why he honors us when we when we we make declarations in the spirit because we have power and authority how did i get here praise god are we together now yes This is important praying in the spirit so the bible says we're looking at romans chapter 8 from verse 26 the spirit helped our limitations what is the limitation we know not what we should pray for as we ought this is a limitation this is what the holy spirit helps that there is a deficiency in all men by reason of wearing a mortal body and by reason of the fallen nature that we do not have accurate perception of what the will of God is in all matters. This is why God gave us the Holy Spirit to become that advantage to that limitation. Then the Bible says, whoever is aware of such a limitation will now recognize that the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The next verse, please, 27. The Bible says, he he being the spirit that searched the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit 
because he maketh intercession for the saints how according to the will of god so the recommended approach to pray over a matter where the will of god is not clear is to pray in the spirit and that the bible says there is a transaction that happens when you pray in the spirit eventually the spirit of god who is also the revealer of the heart of god are we together now he will meet you at the point of your passion where the will of god is revealed then on the basis of scripture we can pray and make petitions with authority knowing that this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything when i'm praying for the sick i don't verify whether it's the will of god it's been established from scripture by his tribes we are healed he is called rafa are we together now i am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly that is sufficient basis for my confidence so when i minister to the sick i minister with confidence not in my own sufficiency but that the words of god his promises are yea and amen 